Have you ever thought you didn't have the time or the space to grow your vegetables during the cooler months? We got three easy steps so anybody can be successful growing their own food. Well, I guess the first question is, why would you want to grow vegetables or grow your own food during the cooler months? It's so convenient for them to be right outside your back door. And I find that if the closer they are, the more I'm going to use them. If I've got to walk 100 feet, I'm not as apt to go grab some when I'm cooking. Or go to the grocery store. Or go to the grocery store. And you've seen the shelves on the grocery store, the grocery store prices. <laughs> and the crowds. <laughs> and the crowds, especially during the holiday season. I love having my own vegetables right outside my back door. You know, I guess another reason is the insect pressure is not near as active in the cooler months as it is in the spring and summer. These collards right here, we've not treated the first time. No wormholes, no insect damage at all. We've got carrots that we haven't done anything to that's growing fine. We got beets. Yeah, they got a couple little holes in them, but for the most part, they're doing wonderful as well. And onions. And we still got some peppers from... Have Be you treated spring. any of this? You've not treated any of it, have we? No. Yep. So it's really low maintenance as far as insect and disease control because they're not near as active in these cooler months as what they are during the regular hot weather. And believe it or not, it can be cost effective if it's done in the right way. We hear people complain all the time about how much it costs to garden. Well, it can be very expensive, but if you do things in the right way and have the right outlook and plan ahead a little bit, it can really be cost effective growing your own uh, vegetables in your backyard. Now, one thing is containers. Now, if you've got containers, by all means, use what containers you got. But if you don't have containers, we love these root pouches right here. And these things aren't very expensive at all. And they'll last for years. And you know what else? When you get through with them, just fold them up and put them out of the way when you don't need them. And if you use a good potting soil, you can reuse that potting soil over and over again. Of course, you don't want to plant the same thing back to back in the same family. You want to practice pretty good crop rotation there. But you can recharge, as we say, this potting soil right here in these containers and use them over and over again. So you got a fixed cost of your container, your root pouch, and your potting soil. And the only thing that you have to buy every time is going to be some organic fertilizer and maybe some compost in your seeds or your plants mm -hmm. and that's it and that's a very small cost compared to what you're going to get. I think last year I had some calendula in this. I had some um, potatoes. <clears throat> then I had it was another greenery and now I've had collards. So you can grow two or three things in one season and just continually rotate. Yep, same pot and soil. Same pot and soil. I just added more fertilizer and I use the worm composting because I have it. And actually these collards have not had any additional fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go over the steps that it would take for somebody to grow their own food and it'd be easy. First of all, pick the right container. Like we said, if you've got containers laid around these hard containers such as this right here, or some big pots. Big buy, flower pots. All means use them. Use what you got. If you don't, consider the root pouches. Now with the root pouches, you need to pick the right size for what you're trying to do. Right. Now you like to use these 45 gallons and these 100 gallons. Yeah, so this is a 100 gallon. The onions is a 100 gallon. The beets is 15 and the carrots is 45. So it just depends on what I'm planting. Now these collards are planted really thick, but I personally like the smaller leaves, so I intentionally planted them that thick. Yeah, and the thing about the root pouches that I didn't understand way back is these things breathe, and that's a little bit different than a hard container. And we've noticed things seem to grow better in these, in these pouches because they can actually breathe and have that oxygen carbon dioxide exchange a lot better. Right, they breathe better. They have less weed pressure. Um, I found that it requires less water. And one of the main things, we've got a cold spell coming up. And these smaller ones, the 15 and the 45, have handles on them. So you can just get you a partner 
and yep. bring it in out of the weather until it passes and then bring it back outside. So I would say those are my favorite. So if you're planting something that is going to be bit back by the frost or hurt by the cold weather, you definitely would want to get a size with the handles on it. Step number two is use a good pot and soil or pot medium. Now, I prefer to use a peat-based pot medium for growing vegetables. Now, if I'm growing ornamentals, you know, a bark-based pot medium is fine. Works wonderful. But on these annuals, peat-based makes more sense to me. It makes it better. It's a little denser. It holds moisture a little bit better, and it's a little softer. It's just easier for those plants to catch a hold in and, and to flourish in. Now this one right here is ProMix. There's several different brands out there that will work. This is ProMix is what I got, SunGrow. There's one called Berger. Any of your big nurseries has probably got this for sale. It's kind of hard to buy this on the internet and have it shipped because of the size and weight of these bales. So if you have a nursery center close by that you can buy these good potting soils, that's what I'd recommend. And you know what? You can reuse it over and over again like we talked about. On the pot medium, this is a 3.8 cubic foot bale right here, and it took most of it for this 45 gallon root pouch here. It's according to where you buy that. Normally speaking, that bale runs anywhere from $35 to $40 at your local garden center. Now, most of these pot mediums, as this ProMix here, are sterile. That means they're free of pathogens, which is a good thing, where we don't have any diseases, but they're also free of weed seed. We have to recharge that soil and get those microbes working again. And we want to do that by adding some good compost. Now, we bought some compost we've had up there for a while. Or Mama Hoss here has a worm bed. A lot of times she gets worm compost. Either one will work. You just got to get that soil recharged. And we do that by adding compost. And then we're going to add our complete organic fertilizer. And we're going to add our organic fertilizer. This is a composted chick manure. We're going to add about a cup. Just kind of sprinkle it in there. We're gonna mix it up real well. And what's good about this is it's not instant, but it releases slowly over time. Yeah, it has a long chain to it that can actually be slow release. So it's gonna release throughout the growing season of the plant. Now, normally speaking, I would like to add the compost and the complete organic fertilizer a week to 10 days before planting to get that soil energized and get those microbes working. But if you get in a pinch, you could do it right there at planting. But the idea is to get this soil alive and get it working. So to plant carrots, one thing you need to do is get that soil moisture up before you plant. So I'll get this good and wet and let it drain a little bit. Mix it up a little bit there with your hand. For carrots, it's really important that they stay wet during germination. So you're gonna want, want to water these according to what your outside temperature is, one, maybe two times a day. And I'm gonna mix in that top layer. And then ever so slightly, I'm just going to make me a line with my finger. Carrots can do well just planted on top of the soil. They, do, they need to be planted very shallow or they will not germinate. So I will sprinkle my carrots in here really thick. I'll come back and we, uh, thin them as I need to. And once they're planted, I'll just simply pat that row down and then really baby them the first seven days until I see them germinate. Now for beets, we like to direct seed those also, but on plants such as collards, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, we like to use plants on those. We won't direct seed those. We'll grow those out in pots and transplant them into this root pouch. 
So the main thing is, is to plant most of these when it's still in the fall, when it's a little bit warmer. So these plants can grow a lot and they can get established so they can handle that cold weather when it comes during those winter months. So we got beets. These are the Touchstone Gold beets. And they are ready to harvest. How pretty those are. Mm. We've got the red so far onions that we planted just a few weeks ago. They're just now um, putting on those pretty green tops. And we got top bunch collars. Man, look at the collars in here. So you just come out here and crop these off as you need them and have all the collars you need right there. And I can promise you, what's this, a 45 gallon container? No, this is 100. This is a 100 gallon root pouch. And I can promise you, you got plenty there to feed a family of four. Mm -hmm. These are ox heart carrots. Which is an heirloom. It's an heirloom and it's really great for those tough soils, which this is not tough, but I just wanted to try growing it. Now these are not fully matured yet, but I'll pull one out. So carrots is one of those things that you really should try if you've never grown them before, because Ooh, the difference of what they taste grown in your, your backyard when that cold touches them and converts these carbohydrates in here to sugar, these things are off the chain. The difference between the taste in a store-bought carrot and a homegrown carrot is unbelievable until you've tried it. So if you think you don't have the space or the time to grow vegetables in the cooler months in your backyard, this is a proven method with three easy steps here. It's easy, fresh vegetables right outside your door there. Anybody can do it. 